Today, we're going to talk about the strongest monsters in Dungeons and & Dragons, and we're going to do that through the fairest system that I could think of. We're going to be using the challenge rating system to see who reigns supreme in the upper echelons of danger in the game. This is part one of three videos that we'll be doing on this topic. For today, we will get to as high as CR 39, but by the end of the whole series, we will be hitting the one monster with CR 50 in the game. So. What is CR? What is this challenge rating? Essentially, every monster has a number attributed to it that defines how dangerous that monster is. The number is defined based on many things, including its hit points, armor class, resistances, damage, and more. This number we call a challenge rating, or CR. The way this number is meant to be used is as a way to gauge difficulty in an encounter, so the idea being that a group of adventurers could fight a monster whose challenge rating is equal to their level and that encounter would be a medium difficulty battle. So for example, an adult red dragon has a challenge rating of 17, which means a group of 4 level 17 characters would find such a battle to be a medium difficulty encounter. Now, CR is obviously not perfect, and some monsters do flock to in challenge rating between editions, which can make this not ideal, but overall, it is the simplest and most reasonable way for me to give a number to the power of a creature, since that is what is literally supposed to represent. Even though fluctuations between the ratings between editions do happen, most times they are fairly consistent, especially between 3rd and 5th edition, which is what we're gonna focus on. For example, an adult red dragon is CR 17 in 5th edition, whereas in 3rd edition we have adult red dragons at CR 15, but mature adults at 18. So generally speaking, I mean, it balances out. Most monsters actually have fairly similar, if not the same CR throughout the editions. So now let's talk about challenge rating in context with the world. How is challenge rating represented in game? A successful, powerful adventurer who is very experienced, who is renowned, who might have a few magic items to show for his grand list of successful quests, will typically reach a challenge rating of 7 to 9. When you get a group of 4 or 5 of these guys, is when you get an adventuring group of heroes who vanquishes the Dark Lord. Any human with a challenge rating higher than 9 or 10 is typically either blessed with some kind of supernatural gift, is an erudite in its class, or is a spellcaster like a wizard or a sorcerer. It is very difficult, for example, to find a heroic fighter without magic with a challenge rating higher than 9. If you do find one, his strength probably comes from incredible magical items. So in short, from CR 1 to 10 is what we could denote as the human potential without the aid of magic or the aid of gods. Now, from CR 10 to 20 is where we will find all of the cool monsters. The supernatural creatures far stronger than humans who require multiple heroes to defeat. Vampires and Beholders both have a challenge rating of 13. Most adult dragons will also be found within this range alongside powerful devils and demons. In fact, it is within this range, at the very top, where you will find the most powerful of the standard devils and demons, with the Baylor being CR 19 and the Pete Fiend being CR 20. What these numbers mean is that all of these monsters are what a powerful group of the strongest heroes should be able to defeat, but anything higher than this is where even the best heroes in the entire kingdom will need some kind of major help to be able to defeat. Typically, any creature with a challenge rating higher than 20 will be very well known in the overall region, their power being so great that they wouldn't be able to help attract attention, whether negative or positive attention. This is where a lot of the ancient dragons lie, the strongest of them all being the ancient red and the ancient gold dragon whose challenge rating lie in the 24 range. Typically, if the lair of these creatures reside in a place even remotely close to civilization, those in that civilization will know of the monster. For example, the ferocious ancient red dragon Cloth, who lairs in Clothenvale in the north of the Sword Coast. Most people are aware of his presence in the mountain, so much so that they even named the mountain after him, and, and how could they not? 
the dragon is gargantuan and he could come down at any second and literally obliterate any city he wanted and there's nothing that they could do about it. A monster of this challenge rating has the capabilities of racing a big city, much in the same way as in the intro to the movie of The Hobbit. You can have a big fortress city with great defenses, but they will frankly do nothing to an ancient red dragon with a challenge rating of 24. The Kraken also lies in this level with a challenge rating of 23. Powerful liches have a challenge rating of 21, alongside some of the most powerful angels in the heavens like the Solar, who also possess a challenge rating of 21. Essentially, a monster with a challenge rating between 20 and 30 will be strong enough to require an army to defeat, especially those between 25 and 30. It is in this range where you will also find the leaders and the most powerful of creatures from all across the plains. For example, the demonic lords that rule over the abyss this, creatures like Baphomet and Orcas circle around the challenge rating of 24 to 26. The Devil Lords, who rule each of the circles of hell, also fall within this range, most of them being around 21 to 22, and some of the more powerful Devil Lords reside around CR 26. Most Titans would actually fall between the lower range, probably the high 18s or 19s, but the stronger Titans would be found in the low 20s. Creatures like the Leviathan, for example, is CR 20. What you might actually find interesting is that the Marids are constructs designed to apply law between the outer planes. So, for example, if two extraordinarily powerful individuals would want to make a deal with one another and they want insurance, they can make a deal in the neutral city of Sigil in the outer planes and make the deal formal with a contract and everything. If the deal were to be broken, if the contract were to be broken, then the Marid acts like a judge, jury, and executioner who goes and kills the the party that broke the contract. These extremely powerful constructs are CR 25, which kinda goes to say that any creature whose power lies above CR 25 are essentially too powerful to be constrained by the authorities of the planes. But then that finally takes us to the epitome of this danger range, the strongest monster in the monster manual. The Tarask. The Tarask has a challenge rating of 30, again marking him as the toughest monster in 5th edition. You can also find Tiamat in this level, to give you further context of what level of power this actually means. From the lore, we were told that if Tiamat were to be successfully summoned and released on Faerun, that she would be able to completely take over the continent and that no power would be able to stop her. So that should give you some idea of what a CR 30-ish creature could do in terms of damage. No army can stop these monsters. At this point, if a CR 30 or higher monster were to be unleashed or would go crazy, then you could only hope for heroes blessed with divine help and with the most powerful of weapons. No one else could stop them. But that takes us to the fun part of the video, and the part that you were probably waiting for, because yes, guess what? We are not done. Not even close. These guys are jump change when it comes to power in the world of Dungeons and Dragons, as you will clearly see. So now, we're gonna go ahead and finish the video with all the monsters and people that I could gather that actually have a higher CR rating than 30. Because there's a lot of them, I'm not going to be able to fully go in-depth with any of them. Instead, we will have to save the in-depth storytelling for the ones on the next video. The truly, truly strong ones that are above CR 40. For CR 31 creatures, the first in our list is Morwell. Morwell is what we call a Celestial Paragon, which is essentially the opposite of an Archfiend or an Archdevil, or at least the Celestial counterpart to those. She is the Eternal Queen of the Eladrin and rules the Fey Elves from her personal demiplane called the Court of Stars. In this level, we also have Kelvin Aronson, the late Archmage of Waterdeep. He has appeared in like a thousand D&D novels and is the late husband of Laryl Silverhand, the open lord of Waterdeep. He was a chosen of Mistra, which means he was given divine power by Mistra, the goddess of magic, so that he could further her agenda on the prime material realm. You will find that because magic is the most powerful force in D&D, that the chosen of the goddess of magic will be some of the more powerful entities in this world. This is just the first, there are a few here in this list. But the last person that we have in CR 31 is Sass Tam. 
This guy is the leader and supreme ruler of the Red Wizards of Thay, a country far to the east ruled by liches. He in particular is a master in necromancy and was powerful enough to completely dominate and take over a kingdom ruled by some of the most powerful mages in the world. So he himself is incredibly powerful. For our first challenge rating 32, we have Safkiel, the first Archon ever created. An Archon is basically the strongest angel that you can be, and much like Morwell, he is also considered to be a celestial paragon. The thing is, Safkiel is the leader of all celestial paragons of Mount Celestia, which would put him closer to being the Asmodeus of Mount Celestia. He rules all the Archons in the heaven and would be the commander of the forces of good in a grand cosmic battle. Next to him we have Asmodeus, who is also a CR32 monster. Uh, not much to say here, he is the undisputed leader and overlord of the Nine Hells and the ruler of all the devils. Now, interestingly enough, we actually have two dragons at this level as well. The first one is the dragon Ashag, the leader of the Talons of Justice. The Talons of Justice is a guild of silver dragon paladins who defeat evil. Now, essentially, he is an extraordinarily powerful ancient silver dragon that has a lot of paladin levels, boasting great power given to him by Bahamut, the dragon god of justice. The other dragon is the complete opposite, the ancient black dragon Valra Saxeth. This guy is quite an oddity for a black dragon because he doesn't really share any of their typical mannerisms. Valra Saxeth is a negotiator. Imagine him being like a kingpin who gathers multiple chromatic dragons and somehow joins them towards a similar cause. It is said that he is a master at teleportation magic and has joined multiple layers of different dragons together with teleportation portals. For CR33, we have only one, the mighty Terpensi. Terpensi used to be a powerful Naga who ruled the kingdom of Najara, a serpent kingdom of Nagas, Yuan-Ti, and Lizardfolk. He was the first ruler of this kingdom before he was slain by the next guy on the list. When the Naga was slain, however, powerful magic bound the creature to the tiara it used to wear as a ruler, becoming sort of like a form of phylactery. The Naga was then reanimated far more powerful than before as an enormous bone Naga with supreme power. The creature now bound to the tiara serves as a guardian for the new ruler of the kingdom. For CR34 we have Larlock, the one that actually slayed the last guy, Terpensi. Larlock is believed to be one of the oldest non-draconic beings of Faerun, a powerful lich who used to rule its own floating city back in the Netherese times. They called him a sorcerer king back in those days and now they call him the Shadow King for when the flying cities of the Netherese fell, one of the cities landed in what is now the Troll Hills, which Larlock found and repurposed. He turned the city into a massive undead city and now he rules over it. The place is kind of like the Undercity in World of Warcraft. The place is populated with liches, vampires, raids, whites, and legions of lesser undead, as well as many necromancers who also live within. The place is essentially a safe haven for all kinds of undead, and Larlock is the strongest and the leader. It is believed that the place has at least 60 liches that live within, and the name of the place is called Warlock's Crypt. Next we got Laryl Silverhand, which some of you might actually recognize. She is the open lord of Waterdeep, an extremely powerful wizard and a chosen of Mistra, the goddess of magic. She is one of seven immortal sisters who were all blessed from birth by Mistra. Her incredible power, however, waned tremendously after the spell plague. For those of you who do not know, the spell plague was essentially the murder of the goddess of magic, Mistra. When she was murdered, magic went crazy and the whole world was turned upside down for a while before a new goddess took her place and took on her name as well. Because that old Mistra died, all of her previous chosen lost much of their magic, including Laryl Silverhand. This is why the Laryl that you see in 5th edition is actually only CR 17, and why she asks you to go on a quest to help her regain some of her lost power in Dungeon of the Mad Mage. She used to be a literal demigod, and now she has fallen from grace somewhat. CR 36, we are getting pretty high now. In here we have Pil It Ith, 
Pil Itith was the last emperor of the Okoth Empire, the oldest civilization known to Faerun and the first empire of the Sarok, the primogenitors to the Juan-Ti. These guys were one of the creator races, one of the first races to grace the planet. This king was immortal for he was blessed by Seth with incredible power. During his apex he was the most powerful cleric in the world. Now his power has waned dramatically for his chosen status has been revoked, as Seth, the god who chose him, was imprisoned and banished. The only other CR 36 creature is known as Symbol, or by her birth name, Alasra Shintrantra Silverhand, also known as the Witch Queen of Aglarond. She, alongside Lyril Silverhand, is one of the seven immortal sisters, and as such was also a chosen of Mistra and granted great magic. She is known as the lover of Elminster and as a powerful demigoddess queen. She unfortunately, just like with Lyril, probably lost most of her magic after the death of her goddess. And lastly, as CR39, we have the world-famous Elminster. Elminster is sort of like the Gandalf or the Merlin of Dungeons and Dragons. Essentially, Ed Greenwood, the creator of the Forgotten Realms, wanted to create a main character for his books and stories, and he created a powerful mage that he saw himself as. The character is almost supposed to be a heroic version of himself. So the character Elminster, he was a chosen of Mistra, so his power was glorious before, showing the CR 39, but now after the spell plague, much like with the Silver Hand sisters, it was written in the lore that he now has lost much of that power as well. But on his apex, around 3rd edition, he boasted that ferocious demigod status. He appears in a bunch of novels, is the author of many books about lore, and as you can even see, some of the notes in books like Volo's Guide to Monsters, you can see that he comments on Volo's writings. He's kind of an important character. But that's it for this video. For our next one, we will talk about the unique three monsters that possess the unbelievable challenge rating of 40, including my favorite, the Dragon Inferno. We will actually go in depth with all three of them and like actually really, really talk about their powers and what they can do, something that I really couldn't do in this video. And then uh, lastly, for the last video of this trilogy, we're going to talk about the one creature in Dungeons and Dragons that has the impossible challenge rating of 50, which would make him technically the strongest monster in D&D. So stay tuned to that. I would like to personally thank my patron supporters, Zach Bowell, Rukato Fan, Barry Maskant, 5E Magic Shop, Daniel Umar, Dr. Cowbell, Rusty Rain, Morgan Johnson, Biotechnofrag, Daniel Luna, Kosh Bane, Doc Feeder, Brad Salazar, The Great Codini, Terry Culp, Major Fail Gaming, and G Herc? I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. <laughs> Red Soul Knight, Baracus Law, and Omega Scales for supporting me on Patreon at the $25 level. If you would like to support me as well, then please head on over to patreon.com slash MrRex to support. Ooh, all right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I am really hyped up about this video. Some of these monsters that I'm going to talk about in the next video are insane. A CR40, a lot of them are dragons. CR40 dragons is... I mean, you can imagine how awesome they are going to be. And this guy, some of them have spells higher than 10, uh, which, which is kind of unbelievable. Um, so that, that's going to be fun. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.